Encore? OK, bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue à l'Agence spatiale canadienne ici à Saint-Hubert. Ça fait plaisir de vous voir en, en si grand nombre ici aujourd'hui. I'd also like to welcome our, uh, our participants or our viewers on uh, social media. Hope you enjoy the event as much as we will here. Mr. Minister, Mr. Baines, um, thank you for joining us for this, uh, for this uh, very, very special event. Um, you've been a stalwart uh, uh, supporter of the Canadian Space Program, um, and you've been a, a champion for the Canadian Space Program, and um, a heartfelt thanks to you as well. Ça me fait plaisir aujourd'hui aussi euh, de remercier tous les gens qui ont, qui ont aidé à la mission de David. As we say in English, it takes a village to put an astronaut in space. Many of you, hundreds of you, have contributed in great part, in small part, to a very, very successful mission um, that David has been, has been uh, uh, proud to uh, have accomplished. Um, David? Bienvenue sur Terre. Merci. Bienvenue ici à Saint-Hubert, à l'Agence spatiale canadienne, puis bienvenue chez toi. Merci beaucoup. Merci tout le monde. Merci Sylvain. Merci Monsieur le ministre. Euh, Ma famille, je les ai remerciés beaucoup depuis longtemps, tout au long. Mais vous, c'est une belle occasion de vous remercier en personne. Uh, I've been wondering, uh, why was I so... What was so special about coming back here to me? And I think I know, you know, a lot of people are waiting, we're waiting for the re my return on Earth. And this is a special group, because you are not fans. You're more than friends. You're my colleagues. You are my team. I've been to space because of the support of people on the ground. So this was your mission and I was your representative. I felt like I'm back from the arena or back from the mountain, having carried your flag. And with all the work that you have done and all the support, uh, I think you should be proud of what we've accomplished together. And space flight is this amazing example of what we can accomplish when we actually put aside our differences and work together. Je suis vraiment fier d'avoir représenté le Canada, d'avoir représenté l'Agence spatiale, d'avoir représenté individuellement chacun d'entre vous euh, dans cette euh, incroyable aventure que je n'ai pas encore fini de digérer. On va pouvoir en parler euh, longtemps. Euh, je voulais remercier en particulier euh, M. le ministre d'être un si grand champion euh, de l'espace au Canada. Ça prend des champions euh, pour euh, qu'on continue à aller dans cette direction qui est la direction de, de notre avenir, l'avenir de nos enfants, euh, l'avenir du pays. Merci beaucoup pour cet accueil, vraiment chaleureux. J'en je, tremble un peu d'émotion. Euh, je me sens... Euh, je suis revenu sur Terre d'abord. Après, je suis revenu dans mon équipe opérationnelle. Je suis revenu dans ma famille. Et maintenant, je reviens un peu dans mon équipe. Donc, euh, la boucle est bouclée. Merci. Maintenant, je vais vous inviter à prendre place dans notre centre de conférence pour la suite de nos événements. Merci beaucoup. Bon, bien, rebonjour tout le monde. Merci d'avoir euh, rejoint toute l'Assemblée ici dans le centre des conférences. Euh, bienvenue encore à l'Agence spatiale canadienne ici à Saint-Hubert. Un, euh, un gros bonjour uh, to the folks that are also following us on, uh, on social media. Um, we're very, very happy now to, uh, to spend a little bit more time with our, with our astronaut, uh, David. Um, and before I introduce the minister, I'd also like to uh, welcome nos, uh, nos gens qui sont du, uh, du camp de jour uh, de l'École nationale d'aérotechnique ici à Saint-Hubert. Ils vont avoir le plaisir de poser quelques questions à David un petit peu plus tard dans notre, dans notre événement. So, without further ado, 
Um, Minister Baines, the floor is yours, sir. Merci beaucoup, uh, Sylvain. Merci pour uh, votre leadership and uh, votre travail. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, et mesdames et messieurs. Ça me fait plaisir d'être ici avec vous ce matin pour accueillir un grand Canadien qui revient de loin. Non seulement il revient de loin, mais il était parti depuis longtemps. Sa, son épouse et ses enfants peuvent vous le dire. Uh, David Saint-Jacques revient de plus long séjour dans l'espace pour un Canadien. 204 jours. Au nom de tout le... Oui, exactement. Félicitations. Au nom de tous les Canadiennes et Canadiens, au nom de tous ici présents, et surtout au nom de toutes et tous les petites Canadiens qui suivent vos exploits avec le cou tordu vers le ciel, je vous remercie sincèrement. Vous êtes un héros national. Vos efforts et votre courage font de vous un exemple à suivre pour, pour les jeunes. And your work not only inspires Canadians, it doesn't just benefit Canadians and advance Canadian science, it truly benefits all of humanity. Solutions to the problems that humans face every day in space can often be applied to problems that we have right here on Earth. Just think of the biomonitor, a Canadian innovation as a smart shirt because it takes your vital signs and records the data. And this is great if you're in space with the nearest doctor in Houston, but it's also great if you live in Purvanituk. And this is a place that David is very familiar with. It's in the very northwest corner of Quebec, and the nearest doctor is in Labrador. And David has also been doing research on vascular health, bone marrow, and bone density. And the physical experience of astronauts in zero gravity resembles that of bedridden patients. So what we can learn in space can help the most in need right here on Earth. And we not only benefit from David's, David's research results, his photos of Earth, and especially of Canada from the ISS are inspirational. And David has a down-to-earth way of connecting with you, and I promise that's my first and last pun. You may have been reading to your kids from space, but all our kids were part of your story. Pendant son séjour dans l'espace, il a parlé 20 fois à des étudiants du Canada et d'ailleurs dans le monde. On ne sait jamais ce qui va donner aux enfants la passion de l'espace et où ça, où, où ça, va, ça va les mener. And for David, it was seeing photos of Earth taken from the moon in the Apollo years. Now David's own photos could be just the spark needed for a young girl or a young boy to really inspire them to pursue a career in STEM. Comme dit David, le rêve peut devenir réalité. L'avenir vous appartient. And the people who will be traveling to the moon or to Mars are walking on Canadian soil right now. And now is the time to instill in them a passion for space and science because we're saving a spot for them up there. Le printemps dernier, notre gouvernement a lancé la nouvelle stratégie spatiale pour le Canada. And this strategy is going to help us build the Canada Arm 3, which is going to be a key initiative to support the Lunar Gateway activities. And the Lunar Gateway will be the first space station that will orbit the moon. But this isn't the first time Canada has been involved in moon exploration. The lunar module that brought Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to the surface of the moon was, was designed by Owen Menard, a Canadian from Woodstock, Ontario. 
And Canada is proud to play such a prominent role from the earliest days of the race to space to now having 10,000 Canadians employed in the space sector and many incredible employees here at the Canadian Space Agency. And we're also very proud of our astronauts, Jeremy, Jenny, and Josh, and their work, work that pushes the boundaries of science and whose work helps us understand what it means to be human right here on Earth. And now, without further delay, sans plus tarder, dites un grand bonjour à David Saint-Jacques. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everybody. It was great to be back on Earth and then it was great to be back with my family, and then it was great to be back at NASA with my close direct operational colleagues, and then finally good to be back in Canada with my family here, my extended family, the CSA team that made this happen. And uh, I want to personally acknowledge our, our, one of our great leaders in the space program, Mr. Baines, who indeed is a great champion of space, believes that this is the path forward for Canada. It's the kind of Canada that we want to give our kids and I'm particularly proud as a father to know that uh, uh, mes enfants vont avoir l'occasion de continuer à contribuer à l'exploration spatiale, à cette aventure du Canada uh, dans l'espace. Puis ils peuvent même, les enfants peuvent même, si ça les intéresse, uh, s'impliquer, se former, s'informer grâce au programme de recrutement d'astronautes juniors. C'est un beau programme uh, d'information, d'activité créé par l'Agence spatiale canadienne. Uh, I'm going to register my kids for sure, uh, <laughs> in, if mom is uh, happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's really great to be, have so many people excited about the space program and uh, what it represents. In practice, this is just like a machine maybe, it's a space station. It is, you know, the most complex machine ever built by the human mind, um, but it's way more than that. That was my home for over 200 days. So what does that mean? It's not just a machine, it's a place where you live. It's an extension of humanity. It's a little island that we have. C'est un petit oasis de vie au milieu uh, de l'espace. Et c'est le résultat de collaboration, d'accord, de, de créativité, qui sont, c'est là, qu est là le miracle. Ce n'est pas la technologie tant que dans le, le fait que ça nous amène à travailler ensemble. J'étais membre de, pendant 200 jours. Je suis arrivé à bord. Est-ce qu'il y a un point sur? Quand je suis arrivé à bord euh, avec Anne et Alec, euh, on a été accueillis à bras ouverts par Alex, Serena et Sergei, euh, qui étaient l'équipage senior. Ils nous ont tout montré. Ils sont partis. Là, on était tout seuls. C'était notre station. Éventuellement, Nick et Christina et, et Alexis sont arrivés, nous rejoignent. Et c'était la deuxième partie euh, de la mission. So we were proud of a, to be part of an international team. And because you know, despite all the political problems that exist, we cannot dismiss them or minimize them. They're real. Uh, they have to be addressed, and they're complex problems. Yet, every day in space, we demonstrate that there is a path forward. When we do choose and manage to put our differences aside, we can accomplish miracles. And that is another reason to be hopeful uh, for the next generations. I think it just shows that we can achieve miracles when we work together. Uh, here we are in our uh, spacesuits, getting uh, ready to uh, come back to Earth. We look like we're standing up, or we're not. We're just floating, yeah. trying to <laughs> stabilize ourselves. It's been a great adventure to be up there um, with such amazing folks. We really, I was thinking about it, my relationship with them. C'est bien plus que des collègues, évidemment. C'est même plus que des amis. On devient un peu comme des frères et sœurs, incluant de temps en temps les chicanes, mais... Uh, C'est ça la vie, uh, la vie quand on est <laughs> in close proximity. <laughs> and so uh, I think it is a great example of uh, how we can work together and accomplish things that are look impossible. So we, this, was, this was us barely two weeks ago. I can hardly believe it. I have to pinch myself. Coming back to Earth, actually, it's as if like riding a bicycle right away. I, I knew where this place is, and it seems to me like this space trip is a bit of a... That seems to me to be a bit of a dream. That I'm not sure if it really happened. But I look at these photos and oh yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's that's me. Yeah. 
So, and I think this is a good, actually, a good chance to, uh, to take a photo uh, of us. Sure. Yes, because this is a photo of people. Let's take another photo of people. You know, I'm being, what I've been doing here when I, since I landed, you come back from space and you're very interesting for scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that means that for the first two, three weeks of your life back on Earth, you are just a guinea pig. I mean, that's it. You do every test you can think of uh, on you. And so I've been very, very busy, and uh, including today, unfortunately, he's got to go on rehabilitation and all that. So I won't have time to do a lot of photos of people, but we can do one group selfie. Sure. What do you think about that? Yes. Let's do that. If I can remember how an iPhone works. Yeah, I would come on this side right here, on I this think. This side there. Yeah, so we get. Everybody smile. <laughs> if you can't see the camera, the camera can't see you. All right. Three, two, one, go. Another one, just in case. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So what is the ISS? It's literally an orbital laboratory. So if you ask me what were you doing up there anyway, well, in a nutshell, I was doing science, mostly medical science. The reason why we do that is because basically going to space is bad for you. And it's bad for you in ways that resemble real disease that people can have on Earth. Mais dans l'espace, ces problèmes-là se développent très vite chez des gens par ailleurs en excellente santé. Donc, est, est, on est comme les cobayes parfaits pour la recherche médicale. Puis le Canada en particulier a vraiment concentré ses efforts sur euh, des expériences euh, à caractère euh, médical. Fait qu'on fait de la recherche, beaucoup de recherche. Euh, dans des domaines euh, qui vont bénéficier euh, à tout le monde euh, sur Terre, des centaines d'expériences, des milliers depuis le début euh, de l'existence de la science spatiale internationale. Et puis, j'ai eu la chance d'utiliser euh, notre robot, votre robot, le Canadarm2. C'était un moment fort de l'expédition, je vais vous dire, parce que we trained for that for years in Houston and here at CSA. You know, by the way, every astronaut, every cosmonaut in the world has to come here for training at some point of their career to learn how to operate Canada. So you, but you train on it you, basically using a video game, right? <laughs> a very good, very good video game, but it's a video game. And you know that, that it's not real. You can't really break anything. But when you're there, there's a little feeling in this room, okay? I better do this right. There's a lot of people watching. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but it's amazing that, you know, this arm was designed to build space station, and it was used to build space station piece by piece. Avec beaucoup de succès, ça a été fantastique. Et puis, un jour est venue la question, oh, est-ce qu'on pourrait peut-être s'en servir pour attraper des vaisseaux spatiaux cargo? Mais il n'avait pas été conçu pour ça. Alors, on a demandé aux ingénieurs de la Spatiale canadienne en robotique, do you think you can, can you do that? Initially, it was, whoa. That's a tall order, but of course, Canadian engineers stood up to the task and CSA figured our way. And now it's almost, no, I want to say routine, but we do this very, very regularly. We completely depend on Canada. There isn't a major operation on space station that does not depend on Canadian robotic technology. And that has made me so proud all the time. So it's this amazing robot uh, that we got to use. Uh, I got, like, uh, I was, I had a sense of relief when we finally captured and everything was okay. And okay, everything, all the light greens were like green and it was fine. Yes. Another high point, of course, uh, was the chance I had to put on a spacesuit and go outside space station. Um, it's something every astronaut wishes they have to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, you never know. There's no guarantee. But we train thousands of hours uh, to get ready for this. And it's, again, it's a huge teamwork because not only, it's not just you putting on a suit going outside, right? You needed trainers for thousands of hours to learn how to use a spacesuit. When you're inside space station, you depend on each other to dress each other up, to prepare the SAS, to bring people out of manière sécuritaire. All the équipes au sol who have written the procedures, who have thought about the trajectory we're going to follow. So it's paradoxical, we don't feel really alone in the scaphandre. You really get this strong feeling that you are a representative of this giant team. And people ask me, do you feel very small? It's strange, but you don't. You, when I was there in this, my suit, just with just my visor between me and space, with the Earth, beautiful Earth, 
rolling gently under me. I felt like I, I was a, a part of this giant thing, which is the human mind. The human mind has such an enormous reach. You can imagine the size of a person on Earth. It's, of course, physically, people are small. But their minds, the soul of humanity, has such an incredible reach that here I am. Here I am, representing them, comfortable inside this miniature spacecraft. It's unbelievable. It's, it, was really, uh, it was very emotional to be, uh, to be able to kind of be this extension of humanity in this completely hostile place. Yet, I felt very comfortable. I had the friendly voice of Capcom in my ear giving me advice, and I didn't feel alone. It was amazing. It was amazing. So it's another demonstration of uh, that, you know, the human aspect of human spaceflight is really where the discoveries are. And then it's a busy time. It's a busy time on board, but there's always time for relaxation. You have to make time to enjoy the experience. And it's uh, what better way to share it than uh, by going to the cupola and uh, floating around. I love to do this every day. First thing I would do in the morning is open the window, the cupola shutters. I look at the earth and try to guess where I am. Yeah. I got pretty good at the end. <laughs> uh, especially when you fly over Canada because our coastline is so easy to recognize, either the west coast or the, or the east coast. This you recognize, of course, if you turn your head like this, the Gaspé Peninsula. Um, and it was... Uh, I love to call people I knew whenever I was flying over them and kind of wave, wave <laughs> them. <laughs> Seeing the ballet of the Earth and the Moon from sky, from the, from space. Voir ça, je sais pas si vous, moi, le plus impressionnant là-dedans, c'est cette petite couche bleue. L'atmosphère, il va à peu près jusqu'ici là, mais on peut seulement vivre dans cette partie là, à peu près. À la, et, C'est tellement mince par rapport à la taille de la Terre. Les océans, c'est à peu près la même épaisseur que l'atmosphère. C'est comme une petite couche de vernis sur la, la, notre planète. Et quand on regarde la station, on se dit, waouh, c'est une machine incroyable qui nous garde en vie. On est six ici en vie dans l'espace grâce à ça. Mais on regarde la Terre. On dit, ça, c'est hallucinant. Ça garde en vie des milliards de personnes dans l'environnement le, mortel de, de l'espace. Et il n'y a pas de tuyau qui amène de l'eau ou qui amène de l'air pour la Terre. C'est tout recyclé. So we live in this amazing life support system, our planet Earth. And I think we owe that notion to the space program. And this, particularly the new generation, I know they're very, very uh, acutely aware of the responsibility we have towards our planet. And space is not just a way to look at our Earth. It's a way to take care of our planet. So when I, was a, when I was a child, these are the images that kind of uh, fascinated me. I remember the moment I realized what I was looking at. Like there must have been someone with a camera very far away from Earth to take that photo. <laughs> they were actually on the moon. And even if you're a small child, you know the moon is far away. I mean, it's in the sky there. And so that perspective, that change of perspective, really motivated me uh, to... I didn't want to become an astronaut because it was not possible when I was a child. There was no, we didn't have these champions that make uh, space programs possible for our Canadians. Uh, but we, we got there eventually. But I was motivated to become an explorer, to expand my perspective over the world. My dream was to understand everything. It's impossible, but I thought I would try. Je me suis dit, je vais rester à l'école, je vais aller à l'université, je vais apprendre une profession, je vais rester en bonne forme, je vais voyager. Je vais apprendre des langues étrangères. Puis surtout, je vais essayer de devenir euh, un adulte responsable pour pouvoir, un jour, peut-être, on me confiera une mission. Je ne sais pas. So that has been a guide my whole life. Merci beaucoup, David, pour la présentation. Thank you for the presentation. On a maintenant quelques questions de la salle. We have a few questions from the room. Um, but Minister Baines, I believe, may have a first question for you. Yeah, no, thank you very much uh, to get the conversation started because we have students here as well that I know are very eager to ask you questions as well. And I'm just sitting here in awe. Uh, I'm uh, absolutely uh, thrilled to be here, to be part of this special day along with the Canadian Space Agency. We have incredible people here that work day in and day out. As you said, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. it takes, it's a team effort. 
Uh, and we're really excited about, uh, about your trip and everything that you've accomplished and you've given us a little glimpse into your journey. Uh, but we also have some other astronauts mm -hmm. that we're preparing for future missions as well. Jeremy, Jenny, and Josh. So what advice do you have for them now after this experience? Because one is you know, training, as you said, thousands and thousands of hours. But now you've actually gone up there. You, you've had this incredible experience. What kind of advice do you have mm. for our astronauts that are preparing? So yeah, this is our team right now, the uh, astronaut corps, Jeremy. Jenny, Josh, and myself. Uh, Jeremy is a very uh, accomplished astronaut already, and uh, we got selected at the same time, so he's really advanced. He's actually the chief of all the younger astronauts That's right. at, in Houston, not just Canadians, of all of them. And Josh and Jenny, they're about to finish their basic training, uh, and they're, they're amazing people. I know they will push it even further than we have pushed it. So my advice to them was, A, it's worth it. <laughs> it's tough. But don't despair. It is well worth it. And also, never forget the team that allow you to do this. You know, uh, nobody goes to space alone. They, we have a joke in the astronaut office. When you see a frog on top of a fence, of a fence uh, pole, you didn't get there alone. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to put the frog there. So astronauts, we stand on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so never forget the people who put you there. And it starts with every elementary school teacher you ever had. That's right. It starts with any friend you ever had who encouraged you, your parents. And then along the way, you know, people at, at work and at school. So we, and that's true of everybody. On est tous un peu le produit d'un village. Oui. On est tous le produit des interactions uh, qu'on a les uns avec les autres. Et, et c'est là qu'il y a vraiment la joie d'accomplir des projets. Oui. C'est de pouvoir partager ça encore avec plus de gens. Plus de gens partagent le succès du projet, plus la joie est grande. Oui. Voilà. Merci, David. On va passer à quelques questions des jeunes qui nous visitent aujourd'hui. Si vous voulez prendre une place à côté de Ministre oui. Robin. Salut. Bonjour, je m'appelle Alexandre. Euh, combien d'enseignants t'ont préparé à ta mission? Fait que ça dépend où tu commences. <rire> Si on commence à l'école primaire, il y en a beaucoup. Et puis chacun m'a aidé. À la NASA, commençons par en arrière, à la NASA, euh, puis ici à l'agence, puis au Japon, puis en Europe, dans le monde spatial, j'ai probablement eu, je n'ai jamais compté, mais je dirais, c'est des centaines de, de gens qui m'ont préparé euh, techniquement à une tâche à accomplir. Mais ma formation a commencé bien avant ça. Tout ce que j'ai appris à l'université, puis avant ça au cégep, puis avant ça à l'école secondaire, puis avant ça à l'école primaire. Euh, ça m'a aussi préparé. C'est probablement des milliers de personnes qui ont laissé une petite marque. Bonjour. Bonjour, je m'appelle Sophie Gentil Gentilet. Est-ce qu'il y a beaucoup de place dans la fusée? Oui, Sophie, non. <rire> Pas beaucoup de place. Viens ici, tu vas voir, je vais te montrer comment c'est. On va se mettre avec le ministre. Viens, 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 viens. tu vas voir. Dans la fusée, on est trois. Alors, toi, tu vas être le commandant. Le commandant est au centre. Il faut être tellement proche que nos épaules se touchent. Comme ça. On est comme ça. Comme ça, comme ça. Puis on a les genoux pliés. Puis, sais-tu, on a plein de bagages. On ne peut même pas se voir les uns les autres. On peut juste voir tout le monde, le même cadran. On peut voir les cadrans, on peut voir le, les écrans de contrôle. Puis on voit juste nos mains. C'est incroyable, hein? On est collés comme ça, on peut juste voir les mains des uns des autres. C'est ça du travail d'équipe, juste de nos mains. C'est vraiment tassé. Puis là, quand on arrive dans la station, ah, là, il y a de la place. Là, on peut sauter, on peut s'étirer, on a chacun une chambre à coucher, il y a beaucoup plus de place dans la station. Mais la fusée, c'est tout petit. C'est comme ça. Okay. Oh, Allô, mon nom, c'est Victor, puis euh, ma question, c'est euh, qu'est-ce que tu as fait comme travaux dans l'espace oui, Victor, bien, la station, c'est surtout un, un endroit pour faire de la recherche. C'est un laboratoire. Hein? Peut-être qu'à l'école, tu as commencé à faire un peu de, de science, des cours de science. fait qu'on a fait beaucoup d'expériences sur nous-mêmes, euh, puis des expériences euh, avec des machines sur, euh, euh, par exemple, des, des échantillons qu'on amenait du sol. Euh, après ça, des choses, euh, des expériences euh, plus euh, de physique, qu'on appelle, c'est-à-dire, on étudiait, par exemple, le feu. 
comment ça marche dans l'espace, des matériaux, comment ils résistent dans l'espace. Donc, la recherche plus sur, euh, en, en physique. Euh, après ça, il y avait beaucoup de travail de réparation à faire. Parce que la station, euh, c'est une grosse machine qui nous garde en vie, puis il y a toujours quelque chose qui casse. <rire> fait que peut-être la moitié de mon temps, c'était de l'entretien ou euh, des réparations, changer quelque chose, réparer la toilette. Des fois, c'est des choses très simples comme ça. Et puis, des événements très rares, bien, c'était euh, mettre le scaphandre pour aller dehors et puis utiliser le bras canadien pour faire des réparations, euh, pour attraper un, un cargo euh, à l'extérieur. C'est ça. Merci. Salut. Une dernière, une dernière d'une jeune. D'un... Bonjour. Bonjour, mon nom c'est Maëlle et ma question c'est est-ce que la Station spatiale internationale est comme une maison? Oui Maëlle, c'est, c'est une bonne question, mais c'est une drôle de maison parce que, tu sais, la plupart des gens, le matin, ils quittent leur maison pour aller au travail. Moi, mon travail était dans ma maison. Fait qu'il y a une partie de la station qui est un laboratoire. Après ça, il y a une partie où il y a nos chambres à coucher. Il y a une partie où il y a notre cuisine. Il y a une partie où on fait l'exercice, il y a une partie où il y a la toilette, il y a une partie où on se lave, euh, il, y a une, il y a une partie où il y a tout le rangement. Mais tout ça, c'est comme, c'est comme une grosse maison. C'est comme si tu restais dans ta maison pendant six mois, tu ne peux pas aller dehors. Euh, ouais, c'est drôle, hein? Mais, euh, enfin, je vais aller dehors une fois. <rire> oui. Juste avant de finir, on aurait deux questions des employés de oui. l'agence. I'm James Doherty. Welcome I know you. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. You described space as a hostile environment, and I was wondering whether you experienced any physical discomfort during that prolonged period of weightlessness, and whether since you've returned to Earth's gravity, any of those issues have been resolved. Yes. So, so let me go from the beginning. So the first thing that happens when you go to space is that you lose the sensation of gravity. Now, there's always gravity. Yeah. It's always there, right? But I just want to make a, just a quick, quick reminder of physics here to understand. See, here's a planet. You see the curve of the Earth? Station is orbiting the Earth. What does that mean? That means that station is going so fast that although it's falling, the curve of its fall is matching the curve of the Earth. So you're always falling, and you never reach the ground. So you're like falling in an elevator. To you, it looks like the walls are not moving, and you are stationary. You're not. Anyway, you lose the sense of gravity, and that completely confuses your brain. Because if you're turning around, you see the image is moving, but in your brain, nothing happens. It's like you, what, shouldn't uh, the feeling of gravity follow the feeling of my eyes moving? So it's very, very confusing. So very quickly, your mind just disconnects that gravity sensor, and then you're happy. And then you're going to spend months and months and months flying around, turning, tumbling, and you don't feel anything. But when you come back to Earth, (laughs) then it's different. (laughs) Because then suddenly, gravity is back. And your mind has to scramble to remember how to use that information. So still, to this day, I'm still feeling those effects a little bit. Like, now I'm standing up straight because I can see which way is up. But as soon as I close my eyes, you know, I can feel a slight sway. Because that gravity sensor is not quite back on. It will take more time. Eventually, it will, get, it will go back. It will all come back, but not quite. That's one effect. And another effect is that your blood, when you're standing on Earth, you know, gravity tends to pull your blood to your feet and uh, not so much in your head. So your heart has to push harder. Right? When you go to space, you don't have that. So you get a big, red, puffy head <laughs> and skinny, white legs. And so it's very, your congestion is very uncomfortable. It makes you, just that makes you a little bit dizzy. And then your body learns to change that, and then you become normal again. You're in space, you're happy, it's fine, and you come back to Earth. <laughs> and then all your blood falls to your leg again. You get big, red feet, oh, boy. and you're all pale, and you want to faint. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we all look so kind of ghastly. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's because the blood is falling to your legs. That's right. So that takes, now I'm okay for that, pretty much. Uh, but, you know, but it takes a few days for that, your body to remember how to do that trick of keeping blood to your head. So these are the two bigger effects. There's other stuff. I mean, we can talk forever. Every system in your body is uh, affected. You mentioned pain. I didn't have that. I'm lucky. But some people have very bad back pain because your spine kind of remodels itself as you're having to stand up differently. Uh, There's a very funny, very interesting thing I noticed. So when you're in space, you don't walk, right? So you don't use your feet much. 
not the bottom of your feet. They become very smooth. Tu as devenu comme la peau de bébé sur le, <rire> sur le, le dessus des pieds, mais le dessus devient très dur parce qu'on est toujours en train de s'agripper avec des poignets. Il y a des poignets pour les mains, mais on s'en sert comme on s'en sert comme poignet pour les pieds. Fait qu'on rentre les pieds en dessous d'une... Comme ça, ici, là. En dessous des barres. C'est comme ça qu'on se tient. Fait que sur le dessus de mon pied, ici, là, mon gros orteil, c'est comme de la peau de crocodile. <rire> c'est super dur. Mon tendon du, des orteils est rendu super fort. C'est comme, une, comme ma pince pour me déplacer. Ça, c'est des pieds d'astronautes. Là, ça, va, ça, ça va revenir. <rire> Bonjour, mon nom c'est Raki Diara et ma question c'est est-ce qu'il y a quelque chose qui vous a surpris ou qui vous surprend depuis que vous êtes revenu, quelque chose de particulier, physique ou mental? Oui, alors euh, ça c'est intéressant. C'est tout ce qui est... Hier j'étais euh, avec mes parents sur le bord du lac au chalet, super beau, puis il y avait des nuages, puis le coucher de soleil, puis on dirait que euh, j'essaie de me projeter la vue à l'envers, parce que j'ai souvent regardé de l'espace j'ai trouvé cet endroit-là. Il y a eu le chalet. Hein? Et puis, euh, on dirait que je suis capable maintenant, je me surprends de voir à quel point, maintenant, je suis capable d'imaginer la grosseur de la Terre. Je suis capable d'imaginer l'épaisseur de l'atmosphère vue d'en bas. Je suis capable d'imaginer où est la station, à quelle hauteur elle est. Euh, est maintenant, ce n'est plus une abstraction pour moi. C'est euh, quelque chose que j'ai vu, euh, qui fait partie de ma, ma perspective euh, du monde. Ouais. C'est... Euh, donc, ça, c'est comme les deux expériences qui commencent, ma vie sur Terre et ma vie dans l'espace, les deux expériences commencent à s'imbriquer, à se rattacher l'une à l'autre et à devenir juste une expérience de vie. Ouais. C'est super beau, David, merci. Euh, malheureusement, c'est tout le temps que nous avons aujourd'hui. Uh, we're going to give Minister Baines the chance to ask one more question. Sure. Um, you know, again, thank you very much for sharing your experiences. It's been inspirational, as you can see. The kids are excited. Everyone's excited. Uh, but while you were in space, uh, we made an announcement here uh, to commit to a long-term space strategy. Yes. The Prime Minister was here, the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau, and made an announcement about our commitment to the Lunar Gateway Initiative. So I wanted to get a perspective from you on that in terms of, you know, Mark Garneau being the first Canadian astronaut in space, Roberta Bondar being the first female in space and inspiring so many people. And we want to have a long-term space program. But from your perspective, what does this mean, particularly for young people? Because you've alluded to that on many occasions. Yes, so thanks for the question, because it is an important topic for me. The uh, one thing that amazes me about space, I've talked about many things that amaze me, the collaboration, the perspective on the environment, uh, on the, the technology, But it's also the scale of things. The scale in space, so Earth is big, we're flying high, we're going fast, everything is yeah. big and fast. But the scale in time, the decisions that led to my space flight opportunity were taken decades ago when we started a robotics program. That's right. Right? We were taken by people who didn't, maybe they didn't realize, but they were making opportunities for children who were just born. Correct. Same thing now, as Canada, as we continue uh, to remain in the club of nations that push the boundaries of knowledge, of exploration, we are making decisions that give opportunities for kids. Yeah. And the, the seeds of dreams that we can plant in the minds of children, that is the wealth of our country. That's where our future is. It's in the brain of children. And so the fact that Canada has uh, joined uh, through NASA into this project of going back to the moon, we're going to continue providing great robotics uh, uh, work. And I can tell you, seeing it from the inside, it's really endearing how well appreciated Canadian engineering is, how a trusted partner we have become. Uh, they, uh, it really makes me proud every day. Every time I hear about robotics, it's just a success. You know? So to give that to our children, to have the, the courage to make these decisions for the long term, for decades, keep us going. And of course, you know, the priority will never be space. I mean, healthcare and right. employment and security and, I mean, the, and the environment and the economy. These are, you will have to do that. But we have to keep a small fraction of our energy, of our resources, of our intelligence, of our time to move forward, to do the arts, That's right. to do science, and to do exploration. And that's with these three things that we do with the little spare time resources we have. <laughs> that's how humanity progresses. That's right. That's how we slowly, from one generation to the next, accrue a bit more knowledge, 
a, create a bit more beauty, a bit more sense, and progress. So thank, uh, I'm really grateful that the, our government has had the courage to continue on that path of giving opportunities for the next generation to contribute a little bit to our collective advancement. Well, thank you, David. Uh, you can only imagine you're going to be in high demand in the coming weeks and months after the scientists are done with all the tests that they're going to be conducting on you. You know, uh, I, I think soon I'm not going to be interesting for them. So then they'll set me free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you again for being, like I said, a national hero, a yeah. true inspiration, uh, and really inspiring the next generation of Canadians, like you said, to think big, uh, and the sky is not the limit. That's my last pun. Uh, and can we please get a round of applause for David? Bon, merci beaucoup tout le monde. Uh, on va compléter l'événement comme ça. That marks the end of our event. We'll ask the kids to go up for a group photo, and then we have a brief Q&A with media that are on site. Allez les enfants